Okay, I'm going to talk about sediment and contaminant transport in Geisha. And this is a... Uh, so you know how to set up a Geisha model, right? You've, you've learned how to set up a Geisha model. There are several different processes you can add to a Geisha model. So one of the things is groundwater. You can once you get your geisha, so the main thing is just to first get your geisha model running without with no processes at all. Get a geisha model, basic geisha model running. Don't worry about adding anything to your model. You could do infiltration, but don't do anything else. Okay. Once you get that model running, then you can consider adding things like sediment and contaminant transport and groundwater processes things like that to your model. But the main thing is first get your model running and then you can start doing this kind of thing. So for sediment transport these are the some of the parameters that you need to enter. Um, you need to enter parameters for all of these processes. So things that happen in sediment transport things that cause sediment transport are raindrop impact uh, something called rill and gully erosion computed is computed in bulk using these three different methods one of these three methods you have advection and diffusion of your wash load your wash load is your your uh, light materials so your sediment materials clay and silt in your in your water that's your wash load and you have settling wherever you have a reservoir settling occurs in your reservoirs if you your sand things like sand and gravel really large particles uses something called stream power routing that's just a different processes that are involved. To set up your sediment model, you turn on the sediment option, sediment transport option in the job, Geisha job control. And then in that window, there's a button you can click on. And when you click that button, there's an option where you define your different sediment particles that you want to model. And normally you're going to have sand, silt, clay, and if you want to do other particles you could do that. So maybe gravel, something like that. But you define those particles, you define the, the minimum particle diameter for those particles, and then other parameters. And there are different methods for sediment transport and if you go on the Geisha wiki it will explain all the different methods. Then the other thing you need to do is define your soil erosion parameters. So you have a mapping table and in that mapping table you would define for different land uses and usually, usually use your land use as well as your soil type to define your sediment transport parameters for different land uses and different soil types. Sometimes you could just use your soil type if you don't have different land uses in your watershed, but um, usually you'd want to consider land use if you're doing sediment transport. And so you define these parameters and there's a different kind of sediment transport that occurs in your channel. So if you if you have a 1D hydraulic model and you're doing sediment transport with your so you have a different kind of sediment transport that occurs in your channel than what occurs on your in your watershed. So your general watershed area, your 2D model area. And in your channel, Geisha uses this method called Yang's method for sand bed load. Fines, so fine particles like clay and silt are treated as your wash load and Geisha adjusts your channel geometry to, to uh, account for any sediment erosion that happens in your channel. 
Okay, so that's sediment transport. And I'm not going to go any more into that. Um, I'll show you how to set up a sediment model. But that's basically all I'm going to say about it. The other thing I wanted to talk about was constituent transport. And consti Gisha supports a first order constituent transport equation. And this equation includes advection and dispersion. And so this is the sediment, the, the uh, contaminant transport equation that Gisha uses. So these are the different, it's just a differential equation. And Gisha approximates this differential equation for uh, the, your grid cells. And these are the different parts of this differential equation. You have change in mass with respect to time, advection, which is your, uh, like if you have your water is flowing, you get physical transport. Um, dispersion is just the, the contaminant disperses not based on the water flowing. Your reaction term, so you lose some of your contaminant over time and then uh, your mass added by sources or sinks. So how much of the contaminant is added to your model over at uh, different locations in your model. So those are the different processes that happen in contaminant transport and you have contaminant transport in your soil uh, in your overland flow, in your stream network and in your reservoirs. All, there, all these different processes happen in all those different locations and so Gisha models all those different locations and it also, so Gisha also has some nutrient transport options but I would not recommend using the nutrient transport options it's very complicated um, and I've never it doesn't work actually so we added it but it doesn't work so don't use it alright so let's uh, let me demonstrate the Gisha model So we could read in a Gisha model that we already have created. So this is a Gisha model that we have. It has some grid cells. Turn on the grid cells. And or I could just create a new Gisha model. Um, the first thing, like I say, is get your Gisha model created and get it running. Once you get your Gisha model running, you can go to the 2D grid module, go to Gisha and job control and the option to run sediment is this soil erosion option so if I turn on soil erosion you can go to edit parameters and Gisha supports all these different sediment transport equations if you if you want help on these equations you can click on this help button and It'll take you to the XMS wiki. You could also go to the Gisha wiki and just look at the go 
go to the Geisha wiki and search for sediment transport and it will explain all the different equations. So, like if I want to find out about Killink Richardson, I just search for Killink Richardson. And the website will come up with uh, the equations and stuff that are that are used for that. So and go here. Here's the Killink Richardson equation. This is the equation that's used for that. And it has all this stuff. But and then there are references on the Geisha Wiki. So you select the method you want to use. I usually use the slope and unit discharge method. But you could use any of them. Then you define your different soil types. So maybe you have gravel, sand, silt, and clay. And you define your particle, your minimum particle diameters in millimeters. And specific gravity, usually that's going to be the same. Then what you need to do is go to your mapping tables select the soil erosion option and I don't have any index maps here but let me create an index map I'll just do a uniform map so I go to the mapping tables go to soil erosion and you enter this information for your for each of your soil types and you might have different soil type and land use combinations you would enter that information for your soil type land use combinations and the WMS has some default values you could just use those values um, if you go to the Geisha wiki it will also have some values you can use and it will have more information about how to get these values but the main thing that you need to do here is to find the percentages of gravel, sand, silt, and clay in this particular soil type. So, and we're not doing percentages, we're actually doing fractions. So it's between 0 and 1 for each of these, but the total of all these values added up has to be 1. So let's say I have maybe 5% gravel. So it would actually be 0 0.05. Um, maybe 10% sand, so 0 0.1. Maybe 30% silt, so that's 0 0.3. And then 55% clay, so 0 0.55. But the main thing is these four numbers have to add up to 1. Okay? Then you just... Um, so that, then my sediment transport is defined and I can just run my sediment transport and this model um, not sure that everything's set up correctly let me just set this up and we'll we're just doing no infiltration I need to make sure this model runs. I would normally make sure this model runs before I set up sediment transport, but let's go ahead and try running it. So Geisha runs. It takes a little bit longer to run the sediment transport model. So I just wanted to make sure it runs. Let me uh, close this and we'll try running it without displaying the flow rates. See how this goes. So the Geisha is running with the sediment transport parameters that I defined. 
And I just use the default parameters in WMS. And the result's going to be, um, I'm going to have my sand, gravel, silt, clay values at, at the outlet. And I can view a set, set a graph is what we call it. So a sediment, kind of a hydrograph of sediment flow rates at my outlet point. I can also view, Gisha computes a map of the amount of erosion and deposition at different locations in my watershed and I can view a map of the erosion and deposition. I'd have to, t I forgot to turn that on, so I'd have to turn that on to get that map. But that's kind of sediment transport. Um, if you want, I'm just going to, this is taking a while to run. I'm just going to uh, start up a new version of WMS. We'll let that finish running. We'll read in the same file. So here's the same project I just saved. You can also do constituent transport. The way you do constituent transport is you kind of follow the same process. So first you go to Geisha Job Control. You want to make sure your model runs first without anything. Once it runs, and you can run soil erosion with con contaminant transport or you can just run contaminant transport by itself. So turn on the contaminant transport option and then you can add contaminants. So let's say I have phosphorus as one contaminant. You have different whatever contaminants you want. Maybe you just have garbage. I want to see where the garbage goes. You could do that. Um, you define an index map that you're going to use with that contaminant. Then you define a concentration of that contaminant in your precipitation. For garbage, you know, I'm not going to have any garbage in my precipitation, so I just define zero. But maybe you're, you're, if you have phosphorus or something, maybe you do have a, a certain percentage of precipitation that's whatever your contaminant is. And Um, there's several different options. You can define these options or I can just turn these off. If you want more information on these options, contaminant transport options, you can. Uh, so this is for, for if you're doing sediment, if you're doing soil erosion, you can also run uh, soil contaminant transport with this. That takes a long time, but you can do that. I'm just going to turn them off. Once you do that, you have to go to the Geisha map tables again. And then you go to this contaminants tab. You select what contaminant you're going to model. Select an index map and you generate your ID. So for my garbage, I have to define a dispersion coefficient, a decay coefficient, an uptake coefficient. So all these different coefficients have to be defined for each of my contaminants. And so if I have another contaminant, let's add another contaminant to my job control. Maybe we'll have phosphorus. So if I have multiple contaminants, I'd have to go into the contaminants. And for each of my contaminants, I'd have to create values for, for each of those contaminants. So I'd select my contaminant, garbage or phosphorus, define these values for my contaminants, and then I just run my model like anything else. Okay. Now these values, um, you can go to the Geisha Wiki and it might have some sample values. Also there's a workshop, a WMS workshop that shows you how to set up contaminants. I think I included that workshop in your uh, PDF files. So if you go to your PDF files, there's a Geisha 
Applications Constituent Transport Workshop. It shows you how to set up a constituent transport model. Okay, so you can go through that if you're interested in how to do constituent transport. Um, there's also this workshop that shows you how to set up a sediment transport model. You can go through that. There's also a workshop. Um, this is for an area in West Virginia that we helped some people with. It kind of explains how to do sediment and constituent transport for mining. So if you're doing any mining, it shows you how to set that up. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much all I have to say about sediment and constituent transport. The other thing I wanted to talk about, does anybody have any questions about this? Sediment, constituent transport. Yeah. Setting up, what's that? I just have a small question because uh, if I'd like to simulate sediment and if I have uh, a, a dam, for example, or hydraulic structure, I don't also consider the sediment at these points and yeah. will simulate it as well or not? Yeah, it considers this, the sediment. The sediment in the dam or in the, if you have a hydraulic structure, it's going to settle to the bottom, so it'll Gisha will model that, and then in the report file that Gisha generates, it'll tell you how much water settled to the bottom of the reservoir in your, or how much sediment, sediment. set it settles to the bottom of your reservoir. Okay, and for the long-term uh, simulation, will further understand the sediment and then will recalculate again. Um, yeah, I mean it'll it'll model. You can do sediment for long-term simulations. I'm not. What what are you asking again? I mean, if it's for long-term simulation for the characteristics of a dam or any hydraulic structure inside of the catchment, will the sediment uh, quantities would be taken into program consideration? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Time. And it, it'll tell you, so like, just like I say in the report file, it tells you how much water for the long, whether it's long term or short term. And usually sediment, you'll want to do long term simulation. But for long term simulation, it'll tell you how much sediment settles to the bottom of each. If you have more than one reservoir, it'll do for all the reservoirs, or just one reservoir, it'll do it for that one. So you can do that. Anything else? Okay. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about was just some resources that are available for Geisha. And we've already really talked about these, but um, in general, so the GeishaWiki.com website is the resource for all the latest Geisha information. In fact, we're updating that. Our company updates it as well as the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers updates that website and so it's going to have all the latest information about Geisha and there are tutorials on the XMS wiki um, the WMS the Aquaveo website has tutorials that show you how to run Geisha and you have most of those tutorials in your PDF files but uh, if Sometimes we'll put out new tutorials that will show you how to do certain things and you can get those off of our website. Also, so like if we go to the Geisha Wiki, we can go here. So on the Geisha Wiki, there's several things. There's this thing called the Primer. The Primer kind of explains, gives you a big overview of Geisha and how it works. It has all the information about that. The user's manual has the specific information about each of the components of Geisha. Um, so if you have a specific question about how something works, you can go to the user's manual. And um, there's a one-page version of the user's manual. You can just click on this whole user's manual. The whole user's manual download, you can print that out if you wanted. Or you can just save it to a PDF. Um, so this is the user's manual. It's just one big page. has a bunch of stuff. And so there's lots of information on that website, 
on the Gisha wiki. It also has the latest version of Gisha, so if you want to use the latest version, maybe we don't distribute the latest version with WMS, but we're always going to, whenever we upgrade WMS, we're all going to upgrade our version of Gisha. Um, so we usually use the latest version with WMS, but sometimes they might release a new version that has some new features, and you can use that. So that's the GishaWiki.com. The other thing about the GishaWiki, um, somebody was mentioning earlier, how do I get HMET files? I was having trouble accessing the internet, but if you need if you wanted to find distributed HMET data, you can do that. And this explains how to set up those files. And they're just ArcInfo ASCII grid files. And there's certain formats that they recommend using for these files. So, so that's all in the Geisha Wiki. The other thing is XMS Wiki. XMS Wiki is the WMS help site, and so if you have a question about something with WMS and Geisha, the Geisha interface in WMS, then you can go to XMS Wiki, and it will hopefully have answers to how things work or have any answer your questions. So, and we have a list of the latest bug fixes, so if you find a bug and you want to find out if it's fixed, then you can go to the website and it'll tell you. Also, there's aquaveo.com, and aquaveo.com has the download, you can download WMS, has a learning center, and uh, it had, there's a forum, so there's a forum. If you have a specific question, you can go to the forum. It's called forum.aquaveo.com, and people post stuff to the forum all the time, and I'll answer, so I answer most of the questions on the forum. And uh, so that's kind of an overview of some of the resources that are available. Also, you can send me an email, and if you find a bug or something, send me an email. I If you just send me an email and say, hey, WMS crashed, and then you don't tell me what happened, then it's hard for me to figure the problem out. But if you tell me exactly the steps, the exact steps that you followed to cause a crash, and maybe send me some files that I can use to duplicate the problem, then I'll fix it as soon as I can. I mean, it'll be fairly soon if you send it directly to me. You could also contact tech support. WMS has a tech support team that you can contact, and they will uh, they'll contact me if they if there's a bug or something like that. So. What's that? <laughs> Alright, so that's pretty much all I wanted to say about Geisha and about the resources that are available for Geisha. Do you guys have any questions about Geisha?